everybody, welcome back. We got another day of combining today. Uh, we're at another farmer's place doing some custom work, some custom combining. Uh, this is a local dairy farm. Uh, I think today I'm gonna try to talk a bit more on how the combine works and how it separates the, the grain. So I got a few minutes here. I'm waiting for the wagons to show up. I'll show you a bit on, on how the combine actually works. And uh, we have different headers we can put on the front. This is what we call our, uh, our flex head or our grain table. And what happens here is there's a set of knives here and they move back and forth really quickly and they cut the crop off. That's what we call the, the sickle bar. And then the reel here, it turns and it knocks the crop over into the auger. The auger carries it to the middle and then those fingers they go in and out right here and they carry it into what we call the feeder house which is over here and it's got a big slat chain inside there that turns and feeds it up into this area which is the rotor. So the, the material then enters the rotor, which is inside of here. And there's like elephant ears up here that are, are shaped in like an, an auger style flighting that pull the material in from the feeder house and then enter the rotor area. And these things here, they're called concaves. And there, there's pucks on the rotor that go around and almost like a, a hammer action you could kind of say push the grain up against these concaves here and the grain gets separated inside here and then is able to fall through the concaves through these wires here and we have different sized wires that we can put inside here for different sized grains and it falls down into the auger bed. The augers carry it up and take it back to the sieves. So we'll go back here. In the back of the combine. Hopefully the camera can pick this up in here. And here are the sieves. They're almost like louvers and we can adjust how far we open the sieves and how much grain we allow to fall through. And this is where the cleaning part happens of the grain, uh, the, the separation of the grain and the, and the chaff. So that sieve, it shakes back and forth and then the grain can fall through and go to what we call the, the clean grain auger which then takes it up to the top of the tank. But there's also something else happening in there. There's a fan underneath there and it's blowing air up into those sieves and then it's shaking. So any light material is gonna blow up into the air and then come out the, the back of the combine here. Then there's another sieve underneath that one. So any heavy material that makes it through the first sieve, but it's not threshed yet, and doesn't make it through the second one, 
goes into what we call the return auger and then up to the return elevator, dumps it back into the rotor and goes around again for a second round of cleaning if it wasn't clean enough the first time. So this is the return elevator, goes back up here into an auger, back into the rotor. This is the clean grain elevator right here. And it goes all the way to the top and then goes all the way up into the tank. This is the cold notes version of how this works. It's, it's a little bit more complex, but I hope it gives you an idea as to how a combine like this, which they call a rotary combine, separates grain. about some of the controls and adjustments that I can make here inside the cab. So this switch right here turns the inside of the combine on and this switch right here turns the header on that's on the front of the combine. We can adjust how fast the reel turns on the head, the, the, the big spinning thing on the front of the head with this dial right here. These are for automatic header height. If, uh, if we were running in soybeans or something like that, we could float it. That's what we could do. These are for your automatic tilt side to side on your header. But right here, these three buttons are very important. So this one, I can move the concaves closer and farther away from the rotor to, to make the material come closer to the rotor or, or further away from the rotor. That fan that I told you about, I can adjust the speed of the fan with this one. How much wind are we going to blow out the back of the combine? And this is very critical because if we have too much wind, we'll actually blow the wheat right out the back of the combine or whatever it is that we're combining that day. So you, you really got to know this adjustment and you got to check. Uh, to make sure you're not putting too much wind in and you're throwing it out the back. And then this one adjusts how fast that rotor's turning that I pointed to you that was inside the concaves. So we can make it spin slower or faster depending on how the grain is threshing. If it's threshing very hard, we'll, we'll close this one up so the concaves are close to the rotor and we'll speed this one up so it's spinning faster. And then you got uh, just some controls here for four-wheel drive um, uh, and a, a two-speed transmission and your parking brake. This is your throttle, uh, road gear, and this is how we drive the combine. With this handle, we move it forward, it goes forward, pull it back, it goes back. 
Uh, we can move the header up and down, uh, side to side tilt, move the reel up and down, uh, move the reel in and out. Uh, this puts the auger out on the side of the combine front load. So we will turn the combine on. Take two, didn't have the engine RPMs up enough. So we will turn the combine on. See, the auger in there is turning, everything's running. This one, we will turn the header on. Header's turning, auger's turning, nice moving. Combine in full throttle. So this is a heavy crop of wheat. Uh, the wheat's a bit tough with the rain and stuff that we've been having. So we're, we're, we're a bit aggressive on, on our rotor. Uh, but these are adjustments that you need to make. Every crop varies. Day to day it varies. Field to field it varies. So uh, running a machine like this is not just holding a steering wheel and driving. Uh, it takes years of experience. Uh, if you don't have years of experience, uh, go work for somebody that, that, that does, somebody that's willing to teach you uh, and, and give you a chance. Um, I didn't know everything I know about combines just like that either. Um, I've just learned over the years and when you do your own crop you learn really fast what works and what doesn't work because when it doesn't work it costs you a lot of money.